On view at Philadelphia's Woodmere Art Museum through January 21st, 2018 is A Grand Vision, Violet Oakley and the American Renaissance. The exhibition exhaustively details Ms. Oakley's long and prolific career as an illustrator, muralist, painter, and designer. The show organizes her work into spheres of interest. The house, the school, the church, the city, the state, and the world. The American Renaissance in art dates from about 1876 through 1917, and many well-known artists are associated with it. These include architect and designer Stanford White, Sculptor Augustus St. Gaudens, and painter and stained glass artist John Lafarge. Like Italy 300 years earlier, America was becoming rich and powerful on the world stage. The American artists used styles and motifs that echoed Italian Renaissance themes. Violet Oakley joined the upper echelon of American Renaissance artists once she was commissioned to do a series of murals at the Pennsylvania State Capitol. After that, commissions flowed freely for this incredibly talented young lady. This film will concentrate on just one of these commissions, the work she did for banker Charlton Yarnell. I spoke by phone with Patricia Lycos Ricci, the guest curator of A Grand Vision, who gave me invaluable insight into Violet Oakley's work for the Yarnell family. In 1909, Violet Oakley received a commission to make a mural ensemble consisting of paintings and a stained glass dome for the townhouse of Charlton Yarnell at 17th and Locust. This was a very stately mansion with an imposing hall used for receptions and concerts within the home. Oakley was given pretty much free reign to come up with a subject matter that would be acceptable to both the patrons and the architect, who was Frank Miles Day. Her concept was the house of wisdom. It comes from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom hath builded her house. And this was the subject of the stained glass dome, which consisted of a semi-veiled woman's head looking down into the proceedings below with symbols of four winds around her, asking where is wisdom to be found. And the theme was the development of the family, analogous to the development of civilization. The room required three lunettes, which are half circles, to be inserted into three of the walls. The fourth wall had a balcony, which is where the musicians would perform. What Oakley came up with was three stages of human life. The first was the child and tradition. 
And in this, she shows a toddler in the center with his mother and nanny. The child is listening to the stories that they're telling him. There are staircases going up and down on each side of the image of the house. It takes place on the first floor within the painting. It's set on the first floor. We see different figures from history who the child will learn about. Now, typical of Violet Oakley, they represent an international group. For example, on the left side, there's Confucius, who emphasize duty and responsibility of family members to each other and to society. There is Solomon going up the steps, the wisdom of Solomon and having good judgment. On the right side, there is Cicero coming up the steps with the classical tradition, a moral philosopher, also wrote about natural philosophy or the sciences. And then Dante and Beatrice are on their way up the steps to talking about how love and beauty can lead us to spiritual heights, paradise, and to oneness with God. So that represents the literary tradition, both of what we now call Western culture, but that was not really defined at the time. That idea that there was a coherent Western civilization was just becoming an academic idea at the turn of the century. So that's the first stage. The next lunette takes place on the next level of the house, on the second floor of the house within the setting. And this is called Youth and the Arts. So she has the visual arts, and music as developing in a later stage. And here you see young adults who are playing the piano, musical instruments, singing, looking through different prints and books of art. And this is on this mezzanine level. The third stage is called Man and Science. Although she's very much a feminist, she's using the generic man for mankind. And this shows the sciences as the later level of civilization. And here she shows a family gathered together. Now the family is older. The children have children of their own. So there are three generations, a grandmother, mothers and fathers, and the grandchildren gathered together. And they are watching a flight of a plane. This is the era When the United States, of course, we have the Wright brothers first accomplishing manned flight. And then in Europe, you start to have other people who are developing aviation, flying across the English Channel. And there they're all looking up in wonder, the adults and the children, that this conquest of the heavens, uh, which, of course, Leonardo da Vinci had envisioned during the Renaissance, is taking place. So those are the stages. Then for two of the lunettes... In the coffers of the ceiling, their idea of the lunette is reinforced with other images. Labors of Hercules are shown over the child and tradition. These are three octagonal panels that illustrate the development of heroic character for the young child below. And then over man and science, there are the accomplishments of civilization with technology. And this is quite interesting because she shows the development of electricity, of the telegraph, and again of aviation. So it's an art and science theme, which is very Renaissance, and also this idea of the stages of life. If the children of a family are raised correctly and with the right values, they're like a society that can also be cultivated over generations to become highly developed and moral civilization. The moral element is important to Oakley, which is why the unifying theme is wisdom. Not just knowledge, but to be wise entails also to be good, that this matters as well. A few final notes. When you hear my voice in a movie, I am generally reading a script that I have written for myself. The story you just heard from Patricia Ricci was all off the top of her head, 
as we talked on the phone. Simply amazing. In addition to the lunettes and octagons, there are four more pictures that Violet painted for the House of Wisdom. These so-called pendentives depict the development of architecture from dwellers in tents to Egyptian pyramid to Michelangelo's dome and finally the high tower of the 20th century. Whoa, that one's all messed up. Or at least it was until the Woodmere Art Museum had it restored. Here's what happened. In 1962, Edith Emerson, who was Oakley's companion and the director of Woodmere, obtained the three lunettes, six octagons, and three of the four pendentives from the Red Cross, who at that time owned the Yarnell House. The high tower pendentive had at some point been re-glued to its surface, and Woodmere just could not get it loose. By 2017, Alan Dom owns the building and gives Woodmere another whack at the high tower. Rick Ortwine managed the impossible and got it, but it was a mess, having been sanded down and covered with house paint years earlier. But through the magic of conservator Stephen Arasati, we can now see at least the intention of Violet Oakley with this piece. The American Renaissance often had collaborations between artists and designers on projects. Architect Frank Miles Day designed the Yarnell House Beautiful stained glass windows were made by Nicola DiCenzo. Ironwork was created by a young immigrant from Russia named Samuel Yellen, so adept that rather than showing Day sketches on paper, created sketches with iron. But the heart and soul of the House of Wisdom lies in the artistry of Violet Oakley, a true master of the American Renaissance.